11 Awesome Video Games Nobody Played There's nothing more exciting than a sleeper hit, a video game that defies everyone's expectations and sells like hotcakes. On the other hand, there are plenty of legitimately great games that just gather dust on the store shelves. Let's pour one out for these games that were awesome but just didn't sell like gangbusters. Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning was a game that should have done well. The game's world and story were crafted by fantasy writer R.A. Salvatore, and the art design was courtesy of Todd McFarlane himself. Amalur featured a huge world with plenty of quests, providing over 200 hours of gameplay. Unfortunately, those 200 hours went unplayed. The game sat on store shelves and only sold 1.2 million copies by the 90-day mark of its release. This might sound like an alright number, but it's considered a failure since it needed to sell 3 million copies to break even. Not too long after, the game's developer, 38 Studios, filed for bankruptcy not long after Amler's release, killing any chance at a follow-up. Grim Fandango Grim Fandango is a cult classic that was published by LucasArts back when LucasArts was, you know, still a thing. It was the very first adventure game published by the company to use 3D graphics on pre-rendered backgrounds, giving the game a real unique look. With a film noir feel, Grim Fandango made Manny Calavera one of the more unique video game characters in the medium's history. But even after winning critical acclaim and praise for its design and direction, Grim Fandango is still considered a commercial failure having moved about half a million copies in worldwide sales. Fortunately, it found new life later on. In 2015, it was remastered and re-released for PlayStation 4, PlayStation Vita, PC, Mac, Linux, and even Android and iOS. Earthbound Earthbound is a legend among gamers, considered by some as one of the best ever made. But most people didn't actually play it when it was released in the 90s. Known in Japan as Mother 2, some collectors will pay almost anything to get their hands on a physical copy of the Super Nintendo cartridge. That's crazy, since the game only sold about 140,000 units in the United States, about half of what it sold in Japan in 1994. Some blame its lousy showing on bad marketing. Others point to its cartoony graphics, which gamers at the time didn't see as much of a selling point. But Earthbound became more popular as the years went on and actually spawned a sequel that was released in Japan in 2006 and a Wii Virtual Console port that came out in 2013. Beyond Good and Evil Beyond Good and Evil, developed by French gaming auteur Michel Ancel, is the definition of a cult classic. It received great reviews and was critically acclaimed for its excellent graphics, storytelling, and unique cast. But it suffered poor sales during its original release in 2003. Some attribute its terrible sales to bad marketing and the fact that it was released at a time when the market was oversaturated with big titles that overshadowed it. A remastered version was released in 2011 for the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Arcade, so you can play it now in glorious HD. Meanwhile, even though a sequel was announced in 2008, the game has yet to materialize as of the making of this video, eight years later. Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars for the portable Nintendo DS harkened back to the Grand Theft Auto games of old. Players controlled Wang Li in a top-down style adventure in his quest to cause mayhem with the Triads of Liberty City. Despite being part of one of the most successful franchises in gaming, Chinatown Wars sold under 90,000 units in its first two weeks in America, making it a commercial dud despite its amazing gameplay. Maybe it was the fact that, at the time, the Nintendo DS was mainly thought to be a mostly kid-friendly platform. And, really, pretty much any Grand Theft Auto game is anything but kid-friendly. Jet Grind Radio If you had a Sega Dreamcast, you probably played Jet Grind Radio. The big problem? Most people didn't have a Sega Dreamcast. It's too bad. With cel-shaded graphics, the game let players rollerblade through the city while performing tricks and spraying graffiti tags on as many surfaces as possible. With enough practice, you could skate around the city flawlessly with a level of grace and style that most gamers could only dream of in real life. Despite its low sales, Jet Grind Radio did spawn a sequel and a few HD remakes. At the very least, the Dreamcast Classic managed to tag the hearts of players around the world. Okami Okami for the PlayStation 2 is a major artistic success to its diehard fans, but its sales figures reveal it to be a definitive commercial flop. Okami followed the adventures of the sun goddess Amaterasu in a beautiful cel-shaded world based on Japanese folklore and mythology. With gameplay inspired by The Legend of Zelda, it was a hit with reviewers. 
Meanwhile, it sold 200,000 copies in North America in 2006 and only 66,000 units in Japan that same year. Even after being re-released on the Wii and the PlayStation 3, Okami had trouble finding an audience. Its sales were so bad, in fact, that it literally set a world record. It was named the least commercially successful winner of a Game of the Year award by Guinness in 2010. That's probably not a great blurb to put on the front of your game box. Dark Cloud Dark Cloud blended role-playing with city building, a blend of gameplay styles that reviewers loved. Even still, it performed poorly when it was launched on the PlayStation 2 in Japan back in December 2000. Fortunately, the game did much better after being released to Western audiences. And it might still find more fans going forward, since Dark Cloud was released on the PlayStation Network for PlayStation 4 in December 2015. Max Payne 2 – The Fall of Max Payne Why didn't Max Payne 2 sell well? The first game was enough of a hit to warrant a sequel, and the second installment earned great reviews. But whatever the reason, Max Payne 2 – The Fall of Max Payne sold terribly. It might as well have been called Max Payne 2 – The Fall of Take-Two Interactive's Earning Forecasts. The poor performance at retail might have made the process of getting Max Payne 3 a green light. Fortunately, the third game in the series managed to right the ship, selling 4 million copies in its first year. Valkyria Chronicles There are few games as pretty and as addictive as Valkyria Chronicles for the PlayStation 3. This strategy role-playing game had great visuals, memorable characters, and a wartime backdrop that hooked players. Its sketchbook-style aesthetic brought a classic old-world feel to the world, which was loosely based on pre-World War II Europe. Despite its positive reviews, Valkyria Chronicles didn't have stellar sales numbers. It saw a sales boost after a price cut, but it was never considered a commercial success. Luckily, its PC port sold very well on Steam, moving about 650,000 copies within its first five months. Shenmue 2 Ryo Hazuki continued his search for revenge in Shenmue 2, a Sega game released for the Dreamcast in 2001. The game took place in China, meaning players would get to explore a denser, more urban environment. Shenmue 2 got stellar reviews, but like lots of other Dreamcast games, sales didn't reflect its positive reception. Two years after it was released, it had only moved a paltry 100,000 copies. A lucky hit, Shenmue 2 was not. Then again, nearly 70,000 dedicated fans pledged over 6.3 million to Kickstarter to make Shenmue 3 a reality. That made the project the most funded video game in Kickstarter history as of 2015. Will that be enough to help the franchise come back for good? Time will tell. Thanks for watching! Subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos like the one you just saw. And leave us a comment to tell us your favorite video games that should have made the list.